Welcome back. I'm going to start with uh, a new video looking at the uh, interaction between Max MSP and Quartz Composer. Uh, before that, I'm just going to show you how to get audio into Quartz and use that to process and manipulate some of the objects. This is the second video. If you didn't see my first one, uh, there's introductory information there about how to find Quartz and install it on your Mac. Uh, a little bit about first patch. Uh, if you need to get quartz, check that one out. Just going to go ahead and fill the patch. I explain this as I go along. Uh, first thing, sprite. Okay, so it looks a little bit like the cube in the first video, but this is just a two dimensional square at the minute. Uh, if I go onto the parameters, I can change the dimensions of this, okay, quite easily. Uh, but if I want to do this automatically, simple technique I'm going to show you use the built-in audio input okay you may notice I've got quite a few different audio objects here I've downloaded from Kiname I'll say more about these uh, in a future video I'm just going to go with the built-in audio input device for now okay so on this we get a volume peak and a spectrum as outputs. If I, I'm just going to go ahead actually, connect this to the width and the height, and you'll see immediately you can get some uh, interaction between this volume peak and the size of the sprite. If I want to change the uh, incoming audio peak value, scale it a little bit so I can get something a little bit more precise. I can use some maths, but there's another object called interpolation, which will allow us to uh, scale values coming in here, something more appropriate. Now if I just connect this up to the width and the height as is, you see the interpolation is going between the values set here in the parameters window. So it's going from 0 to 1 over this duration. So if I slow it down, it's now taking 10 seconds to get to its maximum, then it goes back to 0. Okay, so far so good, but let's say I want to scale the volume peak to control this. Uh, little trick here, right click over the interpolation object, change the time base to external and this gives us a new input called patch time and we can drive this with any input but for this example I'm going to use the volume peak to drive the patch time. So now if you look on the input to the patch time value this is the actual value coming in from the volume peak on the audio input. And it's going between 0 and about 0 0.4. So if I change this to 0.4, what that means is it'll take the patch time between 0 and 0.4 and scale it between 0 and 1. Okay, if I want to add a little bit of tension which will smooth it out or make it sharper go the other way yeah if I want to offset this a little bit so the square doesn't disappear let's add starting value of 0.1 okay so when I'm completely silent the square the sprite settles at 0.1 so the, uh, the volume peak uh, is useful, but it's a little crude. We can get more precise by using the spectrum input. And if I hover over that, you'll see we get uh, 15 values in a what's known as a structure. Um, I'll come on to that later. You can access each of these individually. But for now, there's a, a simplified way of doing this by using the audio processor. So if we connect the spectrum to the audio processor, audio spectrum input, it'll give us outputs for the low, mid and high values in the spectrum. 
So let's say I want to use a mid-range to modify the height. Okay, and I've just got a music loop here playing in Adobe Audition. What I should say about this is Audition is configured to send the audio out via Soundflower. Okay, if you're not familiar with Soundflower, you can download it from Rogue Amiga here. It used to be a uh, hosted on the Cycling74 website, recently was taken over to the Rogue Amoeba website, who, which is administered by the original developer. I'm going to assume most of you are familiar with that, but I'll uh, answer any questions if you have them on that in the comments. Okay, let's just play this again. Currently, uh, it's playing through Soundflower, which is routed through the laptop speakers, and then it's coming back in via the external microphone. To eliminate the background noise, if I come onto the audio input patch inspector, which I highlighted last time, uh, if I click on the drop down menu here, you get additional parameters, which are the settings. And you see here, I can choose a specific audio source, both for the output and the input. So if we go for Soundflower as the audio device, I can turn the audio off on the Mac, but you'll see it's still routed internally via Soundflower. The downside is it's no longer responding to my voice, but I'm not too fussed about that.